Hello Earthlings, my name is Oliver. I'm back with a tutorial, this time on using MadMapper standalone in a live environment. Today we'll be covering briefly surface grouping, the line tool, blend modes, and MIDI mapping. And there'll be a small demo at the end. Uh, we won't be going into any of those in great depth. This is more a guide on how I use MadMapper in a live environment um, and things that I have learned. And yeah, like you don't need other software if you are clever with your duplicating and your grouping and your surfaces. Anyway, let's dive in. Um, so on here, here on the left, I have Mad Mapper loaded with my temp template show. Um, it has all of my shaders pre-imported, so I don't have to go searching for them. Um, on the top here is the preview window of Projector 1, and down the bottom is my MIDI controller, as you can see. Um, so, switching over to surfaces here, we're going to go to this test card that I use. Oh, right. Yeah, turn this off here. Show test button. Get rid of that. All right. So, first thing we're going to do is create a background grid for alignment um, super quickly. This is simply to help us align our project a little bit better. Um, we'll call this background. And then lock that because that's we're not using that. And I'm gonna go ahead. Oh no, nope, undo. I'm gonna select this one and do this. Yes. Um, so we're gonna create a little archway. The venue I do most of my standalone Mad Mapper work in uh, has the projector pointed pretty much straight at the DJ, and I don't like to blind them all night. So I tend to try and create an arch. So. I'm not just pointing light in their eye the whole time. Um, so we've just created four quads. We're naming them uh, based on their pos their final position. Kill. Cool. So what we'll do is grab this one, lock it into the corner, and then we'll grab this. Probably pull it back to two. Knock it down. And then we'll pull this to here. Perfect. Actually, you know what? We want to go bigger. So let's pull this up to here. Because what we'll do is once once it's created, we'll shrink the whole thing down in one go. Um, how aggressive. Let's do it to there. And Perfect. All right. Back over to here, lock this one into the corner. Basically, we're just making it exactly the same. So this goes up to here. Should zoom in a bit, so it's more aligned. The more zoomed in you get, the more accurate you get. We're not going for high accuracy today. If there's tears in the alignment at the end, I won't be surprised, and I won't really be fixing them. That's not really the scope of the video. Down to, yeah. Today, we want to get you guys going in Mad Mapper as quickly as possible. Okay, and then with these two, we want to go Mesh Warp, and then I'm just going to generate a grid of 2x2, two 2, two Tab 2, Enter, and then what we'll do we can still use the perspective handle, not the little handle in the middle, the perspective handle on the outside, and pull that to there. Again with the perspective handle. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna, uh, this is final position is going to be this one. Yes, because that's center. Yeah. Uh, and then perspective handle again to here. Okay. Nope, 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 not, not yet. Not yet. Unselect. Perspective handle to there. Okay, so now that that's all done like that, what we want to do is grab this and line that one up with that one. And this, that'll make more sense in a second um, once we get to <coughs> aligning some stuff. So this one, now that we know the shape it's going to be in, 
we can pretty much rough ah that's why we can rough this one in to there before we do the grid that'll do and then we go mesh warp add nope generate grid two by two enter and then snap this sucker here to this bad boy there done little archway cool so oh no back here here you control d for grouping if you don't know create a little group we're going to call this base is multi um and let's have a look oh no see you have to reselect your group don't worry and then we'll get rid of this we don't need this anymore cool that's not bad um for the sake of symmetry what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the two right ones or the two left ones it doesn't matter whatever flavor floats your boat and flip them so we've got some symmetry going Okay, now that we have about basic arch, let's get into the thick of this. So, Control Alt D for duplicate in place. If you don't, oh, actually, hang on. Before we do that, let's shrink this down. Yeah, more like that. Maybe bring it out a little bit. Yeah, cool. We were just using the edge of the um, projector for snapping purposes. We don't actually want to project that wide. So, control delete D, duplicate in place. We're going to call this one base. Uh, we're going to call this one split. I'm going to go back in, and we're going to go here and here, and we're going to unflip those suckers. I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and then I'm going to duplicate this one again. You can duplicate multiply. Um, if that's what you prefer, uh, really, that's up to you. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to call this one complex. Okay, and then we'll go here, because this is the top group. We'll go here and here. So group select, and then create lines from surfaces. Ciao! Now we have lines. And we want to grab, drag this out of this group at the top here because we're going to control it completely independently of everything else. Uh, yeah, we want it on the top. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's go to split. Oh, actually, let's delete complex for a second, because we're going to duplicate it off split once we do this. So we go split. Um, we'll probably throw it back on this grid real quick, just for some alignment and then we go arrange from output but this is not going to be perfect by like any means this is just going to get us roughly roughly close in fact we might go resize all uh yeah let's do that Okay, and then we'll grab the two roofs and make them half. Actually, hang on, let's just undo all of this. Yeah. Okay. So, instead of using a line from output, because it's not complex what we're trying to do, we're going to do this instead. So, we're going to grab the uh, right roof, move it over. And then we'll grab the two pillars, move them down, make them one by two, and then, we, and then we're going to grab the right one and put it in place. What chow! And as you can see, we have a pretty good aligned grid. Um, let's just test out theory here. Yeah, it's scrolling left to right. There's a little bit of weirdness as it comes in and out. That's just you know, perspective warping, what you're going to do at the end of the day. It'll look better, like if you rotate this, it'll look amazing going this way. It'll just be a little tiny bit janky going left to right, and it's like not even bad. Okay, so now that we've got that 
let's duplicate this one again, now that it's all aligned. Control D, Control Alt D, I should say. Uh, again, make sure your lines are at the top, because like most digital manipulation software, Mad Mapper uh, stacks top to bottom. Cool. Okay, so um, next step is MIDI mapping. So Control Shift M for MIDI mapping if you are uninitiated. Um, we're going to put lines, it's going to be like top to bottom, except the lines are going to go here so we don't interfere with them too much, um, even though they sit at the top. So we'll go opacity for the lines, and then we'll go the base, split, and complex. I'll rename it in a second. Rename it right now. Back to mini mapping, control shift M. Okay, and that's done. We're gonna also use these buttons down the bottom here for the select based on the faders too, like that. And then for these ones, we're also going to go to blend mode and map out blend mode. I find this is one of the most powerful, other than your opacity for basic mixing, your blend mode. Uh, MIDI is your next most powerful uh, thing in Mad Mapper for live. Um, and I'll show you why. So, one, two, three. And as you can see, this one is duplicating, like multiplying across the, the surfaces. This one is split across the surfaces, and this one is split across the surfaces. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to build some cues. Um, Let's, yeah, that's good, but let's quickly add control, audio, filter this out a little bit, um, and then bring this down. Yeah, something like that. Cool, perfect. Um, I'm actually going to blow out my control list and probably stick it here for the moment. Yeah, perfect. So, now that that's done, let's go... Chow. Yeah, because we'll do lines here. I know. I know lines are at the top, but it's going to be lines and then the stack of surfaces. Uh, hopefully you understand why. So, uh, oh, yes. And then with your cue, go like this, and then use media thumbnail, and then you know what's in it. Super neat. Um, let's go here. That looks cool, except I actually prefer Auto Luma. And then if you go add control MIDI, no, 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 speed, uh, remove MIDI. You can do that, but I don't have the control. Yeah, so we'll do this, make sure it doesn't completely stop, but then we don't want it going like too crazy, crazy fast, to be honest. Yeah, cool. That works. I like it. Base, done. Use media. Um, and we're going to pretty much use exclusively black and white materials in um, this base one here. Let's not use that one here. Let's do this one instead. Yeah. Um, just because it keeps it a little simpler when you're um, kind of uh, d d d uh, layering later. Just because you know your bo the bottom of your stack is always always going to be um, black and white. So you don't have to worry about like your color theory at, for at one of your layers, at least. Use me thumbnail, and then, oh, I don't know. What else will look good? Alien text? Alien text, sure. I like it. Done. Okay. Use me thumbnail. Okay. And then this split one, um, we might put some black and whites in. Let's have a look. Let's let's go. So I just midi uh, midied across to the uh, thing there. Okay, uh, maybe not that one. Yeah, let's do that one. But let's add control audio filter maximum four. 
Yeah. Cool. That, that'll work. Um, oh, I closed that window. Okay. Yeah, I see. So, uh, do, do, do. Use that. And then let's grab something a little basic but colored. I like. Sign puke's great. Sign puke's one of my favorite materials. Do that. Um, let's add some audio to that though. Yeah, but never, never zero and never a hundred. Something more like that. Cool. Oh, I closed it again. Whatever. Um, use me a thumbnail. Rainbow tiles. Great, great. Rainbow tiles is money. I like rainbow tiles. Normally when you're building a show, there'd be a little bit more theming, I guess, to the materials you're using, but we're not going to worry too much today. Um, and then let's do candy wall. Oh, actually, hang on. No, uh, thickness? Oh, yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, what do you do with that one? Yeah. Yeah, neat. Neat, 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 neat. Okay, and that'll do that. Um, so we're just keeping the second group here a little bit more on the simpler side for uh, sh um, material content, shader content, whatever you would like to call it. So for this top group, this is where you're going to get really complex. Um, maybe grab like your more classic video materials, like whatever you want kind of thing. Um, yeah, I like that one. Let's do that one. Let's have a look. Have a little look, see? Yeah, that's not bad. I don't use a lot of videos personally, um, just because I like the ability of the uh, of shaders to like. Oh, I didn't pick it up. Uh, f f you can the live manipulation is what I'm trying to say. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, repeats. Yeah, uh, let's do that. Q. Um, what's this one? What's this one like? What's this one look like? Well, not bad. And then let's grab, um, ooh, like this one? Yeah. Alright, so now that we have some cues built, hang on, let's go, go here. Now that we have some cues built, let's do a little bit more MIDI mapping. Um, I don't, uh, this is going to be lines when we get there. Um, so let's do bounce, 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 bounce. I have a sticky key. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Wait, uh, did I screw that up? Hang on. Do this. Yeah, I did. Okay, and then I guess we can pre-fill these. Cool. Um, actually, let's fill out the lines first. So, lines. Lines, lines, lines.
Segment chase? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it on one. No. Uh, yeah, let's do. So, one will be serpentine. We'll actually just name these. Serp. Um, and then. Do, do, do. Was that chained? Oh, hang on. Let me delete this. I forgot to turn that off. Ah, uh, okay. So. Oh, oh, hang on. Let me delete that too, because we don't have anything on. So, activate. Yeah. Serp. Uh, let's do... Chase, and then match output geometry. But I really like this feature, so let's turn this off default. Um, and then do this. There we go. Our code, and then. Um, That's okay. I'll we'll do this. Cool. And then we'll grab all of our cues and then add a two second fade time to all of them just so they fade nicely between them. And let's check our handiwork here. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, and then one last thing. Um, I'm gonna grab all of these cues. I'm gonna grab all of these. We wanna go uh, edit and then go opacity and release it and also release the blend mode. Leave edit mode. So now, because we have opacity and blend mode um, mini mapped, we don't we don't want that. Okay. Uh, the last thing we're gonna use this little knobby here for our audio in. Um, I find I find having that mini mapped it's a little bit laggy because I think it's ASIO uh, and it yeah it tends to jump around with ASIO and I don't want to change it now. Um, but yeah, it just affects basically how much your materials react for their audio things. And you can kind of, yeah, it gives you a little bit more hands-on control than you would realize. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's basically a show. Like we have, yeah. There you go. So we'll leave that one up. Uh, and now what's really powerful, okay, so if we have alien text, let's let's put it on gradient just so it's a little bit more consistent. Um, and then what do we got going on in two? Perfect, candy wall. So let's go to two. And um, if you look at the blend mode, we're just gonna use the MIDI controller here to change it. So like, as you can see, add does that over, multiply, and honestly subtract is the shit though. Like, yeah, that's that's where your money shot is. Like if we put this on blocks, 
you see it's multiplying the color and it'll work for the one above it. Oh, sorry, no, because we want this one to be on multiply two. But yeah, as you can see, it'll pretty much multiply everything. It's great. It's the, the yeah, the, the blend modes is, is what make Mad Mapper amazing. Uh, apart from all of the other things that make Mad Mapper amazing. But yeah, like that's, that's three surfaces blended. Um, put it on this one. A little bit more. Ah, that sticky button. Hang on. Did that actually map? Ah, so annoying. But yeah, there you go. Triple blended. There you go. Like, and you can you can if one of these is on this, you can do it with that layer too. It just it's keeping track of your color mixing. That's the trick here. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up. I. I feel like if that's enough, you just go lines, get rid of lines, like you've got whatever you want. And if you have more mini controllers, like if I map this machine or whatever you have, you can uh, have color control of your surfaces, you can have more control of your materials. Really, the, the sky's the limit as long as you have things to control them with, or you assign them to audio, or wh whatever you want to do. It's it's as open as you want it to be. Um, but as I said, I promised you guys a demo show, so let's see if this will do the thing. I'm not going to make it too, too much bigger, but we'll just make this more focused here, um, so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to do that.